Hey guys, so what do you cut? Going to talk today about setting goals in your training. One of the reasons that I've had the success that I've had so far and continue to have success in my Muay Thai journey and get to the point of being an instructor and able to help others to get better and develop in their journeys is uh, not only do I have goals within my training, but also I'm present in the moment. So I don't, uh, when you set yourself a goal, I think it's important, it's a two-pronged attack that you're giving. So you're not just thinking of the goal and just working toward that. Also need to be present in the moment when you're training and thinking about exactly what you're doing right now. Uh, don't put off, don't lose focus on what you're doing right now for focus on a goal that is not taking place at this moment. So don't think of where you want to be at later and lose touch and lose focus with what you're currently doing. But with that said, it's kind of a rare personality type that can come without a goal other than just to get better and can fully engage. So it helps most of us to have a concrete goal that we're working towards in our training. Here are some examples of good goals if you're having trouble defining where your journey's at. Here's some examples of some good goals for beginners or been training for a little while. A great goal depending on where you're training and who your trainer is and if they think you're ready for this, a great goal is to work towards competitions. Go to your trainer and say, hey, I think I've developed some of these skills enough that I think I'm ready to step into a competition setting then they're gonna define, usually this is a commitment that's about, you know, you'll have a fight camp, which will be four or six or eight weeks to prepare for a competition, then you'll come in. If you've never competed before, maybe you'll be in a uh, interclub spar or a point sparring match or something like this before you go into a full hit as hard as you can type of matchup. For those of you who are training for competition, this is a no-brainer, but even for those of you who are maybe not, maybe you don't see yourself as a competitor and you don't want to see how far you can go with it, it's still a great goal to say, I want to compete on such date. And it gives you a goal to work, let me see how good I can get by this date, how much I can improve my technique, my skill, my conditioning, my speed, and up until this date, and then see where you're at. It's like a really hard test of your skills and your conditioning and your strength and your tenacity. Another good goal to help define your journey is a rank promotion or a belt promotion. In jiu-jitsu, it's a universal system, so every, every gym that you go to, everybody stays to the same curriculum. In Muay Thai, different gyms and different studios and different schools may not, ha they may not have the same defined uh, Prajad system or the same degree system. Uh, if you're watching this blog and you practice other different martial arts, then you may have a more clearly defined system. But this can be a great goal to work towards. It will usually take months or up to a year or more to advance a degree in your rank. If you practice Muay Thai and your gym does not have a rank system or they don't give out a uh, new Prajad for your, for your uh, achievement, some gyms have, uh, they have like different classes instead. So they'll have the beginner class that you start in, then an intermediate class after you've learned the basics, and then they have the advanced class. So for, if that's the case, then that's kind of like being promoted from beginner to intermediate to advanced. So I know, there's only, I know that's only three degrees, and really it's not enough to uh, keep you engaged for, multiple, for a lot of years, but you can at least you can focus on getting from beginner to intermediate to advanced. And once you reach the advanced level, right, this, sometimes, depending on your gym, getting from intermediate to advanced can be very difficult because sometimes those advanced classes are only for competitors and people that are very, very talented. Once you get to the advanced level, the only, the only other way to look at yourself as gaining a promotion would be to compete and win in competition. But if you don't want to do that, at the advanced level, you could say, uh, this week I'm going to get better at this technique, or I'm going to get better at my footwork on this range, or in, within the clinch, I'm going to learn to shift my weight more fluidly. You know, defining little minute goals for yourself. That's really the only. That's really only. If your gym has no Prajad system with multiple different ranks, and you've only you you're at the top class that you're allowed to take, then you really just need to start defining goals for yourself on a more granular level. So you need to cook. This week I'm going to get better. My, my, my jab and cross are going to get crisper. The next week you change it. This week my uppercuts are going to get 
I'm not going to drop my hand on my uppercut. I'm going to train that out so that the more reps I get, it's going to look better and better. If you think that neither of these categories of goal really fit you yet, you're probably going to need to set a goal of just being consistent in your training. Group classes, you can say, I'm going to go three times a week, and that's my goal. If I go three times a week for a month, that's 12 classes, uh, that's, that's goal one, right? Then you can reach that. Okay, I've done that for two months. On month three, I'm going to start going four times a week. So then that's 16 classes. So that after you reach that goal, then you can get past it to the other goal. Again, in the interest of looking at this in the, in the grand sense, you don't necessarily want to just set a goal and that, have that be the only thing that you think about. You want to be fully engaged in every session. But setting a larger goal can help you to be consistent and give you a, a, an idea of where you're at. You might lose your place, so to speak, if you don't really have a goal other than to get better that session. For me, I do okay even if I'm just training to have fun and to try to get better that session. But I think I'm kind of a rare personality type that enjoys, that enjoys the training just for its own purpose and really likes to embrace the moment and get the most that I can from it. So in that sense, the goal of every session, your individual sessions, you should have something specific in mind. If your trainer's wanting to work on a specific technique or a specific outlook of, demonstrate, of, of working on a technique from a certain way or a certain mindset or trying to correct some behavior or trying to improve some behavior, that should be your focus for that session. But just having a larger goal, a longer term goal for each little section of your journey is going to give you, it'll, it'll help to define and it'll help you to, once you, once you surpass that, you'll get a lot more sense of pride from surpassing that goal than just an individual session where your only goal was to get a little bit better. Goes without saying, always remember to have fun. If you stop having fun, then what's this all for, right? So remember, remember to get better every session and to make sure that you're still having fun and working towards your goals. Cup and cup, take care of yourself.